back with the Battle of Sultsy scenario for the Roads to Leningrad game. We're getting ready to start the third turn, which is 14 a.m. Um, I got need to do some uh, minor maintenance because uh, I rarely go over the end of the turn upkeep kind of stuff because we haven't really had uh, things come up in the game so far that, that get dealt with in the sort of end. Uh, when you're done with all the... I'm being really bad speaking right now. When you finish all the activations for a turn, there is a reorganization segment that both players take. Um, this is includes, I think I discussed this in a previous video, but I'll just go over it again just for completeness sake. Uh, at the end of the turn, when all the activation markers have been played, you have um, what you start with an engineering phase in which you complete building all friendly strong points by turning uh, the ones under construction into their completed sides. I believe, like in the first video, I said it was possible by taking two uh, assault turns, uh, two activations in one turn, and making them both assault sequences, which, uh, if you remember, it's during the assault sequence that you can build strong points. Uh, I alluded in an earlier video that if you actually had two of those in a row, that uh, you could actually complete a strong point before the end of the turn. That's not true. I don't know why I thought that. Uh, I was looking over the rules again, and I was completely wrong there. So, you know, it's one of those things where you say things that you believe, and then as you watch a video of yourself talking, you realize what a fool you are. So, uh, you know, that's the nice thing about this video series. I'm, I'm really, you know, nailing down the rules of play. I mean, I'm making mistakes. I try to catch them. I try to watch the videos again uh, and catch them when I'm not so pressured to talk. It's a lot easier to see what you're doing and make sure you're doing it correctly. And, and last turn, I was pretty happy. Very few real big errors. So I made one small error with regards to reaction movement. Uh, I won't really go over that. I discussed it pretty much at, at length there. It's just the, the main thing is that if you do reaction movement, you can't enter an enemy zone of control or you have to stop uh, unless a friendly unit is in that hex. Uh, and uh, so I, I, I sort of messed that up with the way we did reaction movement with um, uh, the 8th Panzer units here. Uh, I detailed that, I believe, in both YouTube and I posted at BoardGameGeek. I'm also posting these videos on the game box, and I haven't put my errors up there. I probably should make a list of the errors for the for the folks reading stuff over there, watching the videos. But um, you know, last year was pretty good. Not necessarily great in terms of what the Germans can do, uh, but it, you know, if it's terms of errors in play, I think I had I kept it down to a minimum. Anyway, so I kind of rambled there, but talking again about the segment, I sort of omit every time. So the engineering phase. We haven't built strong points yet. It's going to start happening soon, uh, and that's when you finish those strong points. And strong points uh, are a pain in the butt for attacking forces to deal with because not only do they cost an extra movement point to get over uh, when you clear them, uh, not, but they don't go away unless you cut them off from supply or you put a combat unit on top of it and stays there uh, until this phase we're talking about now, and then you can remove them. So it's not even enough to just push guys off of a strong point. You have to take time to physically like deconstruct it. Um, and that can be time consuming, costly. Uh, it can keep key units that you want at the front stuck in the back or vice versa. And also the strong points until they're removed, they cut off supply themselves. So it's something you have to deal with. If you're the Soviet player, you're going to be building a lot of, uh, strong points in Sultsy. Hopefully this next turn we'll start seeing more in the town here. And, and directly on the road is the best place because that's the, you know, the supply line for the Germans. It's what they have to keep open and keep going. So this is the phase where you'd actually either see them destroyed or completed the strong points. But we haven't had that happen yet, so that's why I've kind of been ignoring it. There's also the reorganization phase that comes next. And this is when we would remove disruption markers or roll to see if they're removed. Um, if you're in an enemy zone of control, you have to make an ER check to remove disruption. If you're not in enemy zone of control, it just goes away at this point for free. Uh, this is also where you turn over any... Uh, HQ unit. So you can see here we've got the 8th Panzer. It used all of its command points. At the end of this turn, this is when we actually take this guy and flip him. And yeah, he gets, he gets his two points back. Uh, it also says you're supposed to, uh, oh yeah, and all um, supplied fired artillery can flip over as well. So if an artillery unit is out of supply, it does not get to flip over during this phase. If it is in supply, it does. So for example, we haven't had artillery with 8th yet, but if you remember, our friends, the third motorized, finally got some of their artillery up. So you can see, oh, sorry, I'm being really jerky with the camera there. So you can see here that it's um, fired. We cleared this route, this northern route, or that unit actually, we didn't really clear it, it just ran away. So as you can see the supply line there, we're getting free supply on this minor road. 
This actually isn't a major road, the gray one. This is a minor road, and during rain turns, it actually costs a full movement point to use the minor road as opposed to a half movement point that you would find on major roads. But minor roads carry supply for free, uh, just like major roads. So by having this open, norm, you know, if we hadn't had this route open, this unit would not be able to trace supply back to the southern road uh, because you would just have way too many hexes to go. I mean, you can see that's quite a bit right there. So by keeping that northern route open now, we can have sort of more freedom of operations, freedom of movement for these third motorized units here. And because of that, we can flip this guy over. That was a long explanation to say that, hey, in supply, artillery units get to flip. If you keep things out of supply, they don't flip. Uh, and that can be really handy later in the game when we're actually trying to cut each other off and it'll become a real pain for the Germans if they get cut off because artillery is definitely a force multiplier. It adds, you know, usually gives you one really good attack when you master artillery. Um, so losing the ability to resupply it or flip it over is kind of a pain. Okay, so we did that. Uh, I believe that was the only units that had um, command points being used. I'm kind of scanning the board now. I don't see any others. Yeah, so I think we're okay. Um, so now what we do is we roll, oh, we keep going the list, sorry, I'm doing the list here. All the army units that you may have activated, and there's not a lot of army units in this game, so we're not gonna see that a lot, but this is when you remove those activation markers, like first move, last move. I think I discussed, discussed that in the last game, how you can use sort of army units, uh, different formations can command them if they're within range, um, things like that. So this is when you remove those markers, that's kind of upkeep stuff. Then there's a victory determination phase, pretty self-explanatory. And then we do the turn record. So that's pretty much it. The, the thing I've been skipping is building strong points, flipping guys over, tracing supply, things like that. Actually, I'll trace supply at the beginning of next turn, but this is for artillery, we trace supply. Okay, so we're gonna go to 14 a.m. and we're gonna roll for initiative. And let's see, there are no die roll modifiers because the Germans um, did not successfully advance two hexes, I don't believe in the last turn. I'm usually pretty good about noting that and uh, Soviets did not pass. So we have no DRMs for this, so we're gonna roll. Oh, narrow. Looks like the Germans are gonna get to go by a narrow margin. So they get the initiative. And now we'll do a weather roll. All right, we roll a five. That means it's still gonna be clear. Um, if we'd roll a seven through 10, we could have had a cloudy day. And cloudy only affects air combat, really. It, it adds a multiplier to, you have to add a plus three to your roll, which means that some of these planes that have very low ER ratings, like the, was this a Junker that has like a four rating, you know, you're gonna have to use command points to even try to get it in the air because automatically you're gonna have a plus three roll. So you'd have to roll a one, and if it's during a mobile turn, uh, you won't get a success unless you spend points on it. Uh, it, it also affects the uh, Soviet airplanes as well. They have pretty low ER ratings. I think that in the Roads to Moscow game, the planes actually have much higher ER ratings, and some of them actually have um, uh, the DRM as a 2 instead of a 1. So much more effective air, air power. Uh, and like I said, I'm using the air rules for Roads to Moscow and Roads to Leningrad uh, system. The Roads to Leningrad system had a much more complicated air system. Well, I won't say complicated, just more involved, more steps. I'm not using it because it's just much easier to use the Roads to Moscow. So that could be affecting some of the play balance of the scenario. I don't I don't. You know, I'm not going to really say that it's so imbalanced or anything, you know, because I'm barely competent enough myself to evaluate. So that's just a little word on the air units there. Okay, so we did the weather phase. Now we're going to look at reinforcements. And this is a turn when lots and lots of things come in for the Germans and also the Soviets. We kind of get some nice uh, pickups here on the... Uh, God, what am I, I'm so bad with words right now on the reinforcements. So... Here's what we got for the Germans. You can see they have those that one row there, a lot more of the 8th Panzers coming in, and then also much more of the 3rd Motorized. We're finally going to have the 3rd Motorized, including that unit, which doesn't look special, but it is armor, and it does let uh, this, these uh, motorized infantry conduct mobile attacks. You must have an armor, armor car, uh, maybe cavalry. Let me double check on that, but I know it's armor and armor car. So finally, they're going to be able to conduct those. For... The Soviets is just a lot of defensive units here. We're going to get the 183rd is going to come in through the south. More of the 21st tanks will arrive. The 70th finally gets its activation marker. The 237th can go on the east edge or the north. And as you can see, that's a, a substantial unit there. So I think we're going to have them come through the north as they historically did. So you can see the little boundaries of where they can come in. We'll have them reinforce up there. And we'll have sort of the 183rd. It'll come in from the south down here. Let me move that so you get a little better look. 
So we're beginning to we're going to be getting putting pressure on the on the Germans here through those movements, and we'll get more tanks to the east here. They're going to come in, and finally the 70th is going to start being able to move. So I'm going to get those reinforcements set up, and then I'll come back, and we'll actually pull the first activation marker, and we'll see what the Germans can cook up in terms of their opening moves. All right, we're back, or I guess I'm back. There's no we, really, unless we count the royal we, which I, I don't have the title for or the manner mannerisms for. I'm just too normal and plain. Uh, so I'm back, and I've decided where the reinforcers are going to go. So let's take a look. I got the 183rd uh, here where I tape my uh, plexiglass together. They're going to come up here through the southern road, and there's also this railroad here that I can use. And the idea is that we're going to take this southern approach, and we're going to be able to move up here and sort of cut off the ability for the for the Soviet or German forces to maybe move south and kind of come this way to Stolzee while also moving up and putting pressure on being able to cut this road over here because while there are a few uh, bridges, there's lots of trails here and uh, these guys are all leg infantry. And leg infantry can just walk through forests pretty easily. Um, so there's lots of ways that we can get up here. I'd like to be able to get up to Gorky and hold it or if not, uh, Zapolie would be also another good place to hold up. If I could get up to Poliani, that would be even better because it cuts off the sort of northern area and goes there. Uh, and that would also put me a lot closer to putting threat of cutoff. Now, the reason I don't, I could have started them actually anywhere from here to over in this direction because you could think about trying to protect Bolot over there because I suppose a canny German player could just sort of take the southern road and jet down here and try to grab some victory points early on. But instead, I chose to put them over here, uh, the 183rd, because I do want them to be a threat because, of course, more and more reinforcements are flowing in for the 8th Panzer and 3rd Motorized, and they're going to come through the south. And one thing I really didn't discuss was this, uh, the Arco unit here. He's an HQ that helps out with artillery coordination only. So it's just one free point. Um, we lose points if they get bagged, but they help out with artillery coordination, so that's great. Uh, oh yes, the Northern Forces. The 237 is quite... Uh, it's a lot of infantry, but it's quite a lot of units. I think I have nine battalions worth of infantry and uh, some artillery as well to boot. So they're going to come down here and start helping to defend... Um, oh, what is that city? Oh, it's Bolshoi Utergrash. It's like the larger Utergrash. Or Uter Utergash? Yeah, there's no Gorsh. It's Utergash. Um, so they're going to come help defend that because, of course, the third motorized is beginning to move down there. I think this will be way more than third motorized can handle currently. So it's going to be a question of how fast we can get these reinforcements up the line to assist the third motorized on the northern road. And they may actually be tasked to come help with the southern forces coming down here. Uh, we'll see. This is where the game, I think, is going to start dramatically changing from how I played last time. Mainly because I... I did do a lot of the same decisions as the Soviet player, I'll say that. Like, basically the way I configured the forces here is the same way that I set them up in my last playthrough of this scenario. Oops. Sorry guys, that was a lot of shakiness. And, but it's going to change a lot here because I think I'm going to try to do a greater push on the northern road for the third motorized. And we'll see what happens here because I've already lost a lot of armor steps around here, so Sulti's going to be a little more difficult to take. And uh, we'll, so, you know, this is where things, I think, are going to start to sharply divide. Because the first few turns sort of guided down a path. Here's where things are just really exploding. Um, mainly because there's more activation markers, as we can see here. Uh, look at the Soviets. They get all those activation markers now. We still have those for the Germans. So here is where the Soviets are going to get beginning to muster more forces. But then you're going to have to make tough decisions on, do you want to have one of these sit in reserve? Because there's five tokens here. And, it, you know, so you have like a, or six, I'm sorry. So you only have a 1 in 6 chance of drawing what you want in the beginning, and uh, whereas you can see the Germans are just much more focused, right? So this is going to be an interesting turn, uh, because the Germans went first, as we can see, they won the initiative. They will elect to put all four of their activation markers in, and that means that you can only put five activation markers in for the Soviets, because the rule is up to as much as the initiative player puts in, plus one. All right, so let's think about this. And maybe try to make a decision on what we're going to put in the cup. Shouldn't be too hard. Okay. All right, that's good. Shh, we'll zoom up there. Oops. All right. So, 
we're going to keep all the German ones in. So automatically, if it had been the other way around, the Soviets could have had all five or all six of theirs put in, and the Germans would have just had only four. There's nothing they could have done to equalize it or, or have them put less in. So uh, had the Soviets won, that actually would have been a nice little advantage for them. But now we have to make hard choices. So essentially, we can only pick, we have to pick one that we're not going to be using, one formation that we don't think will have a lot to do. A good candidate might be the third tanks. They're pretty weak and almost done. Uh, I really need the 202 because the 202 is around Sultsy, and I really need to start thinking about what they're going to help with defense. I mean, 21st tanks I need. You know, that third tanking is just sitting there, but I need the 21st tanks and the 202. I need to start moving these guys, 183rd, and the 237 up there. So as much as it pains me because the third tanks are not in awesome positions and could probably be easily picked off if they don't move because I don't have I won't have the opportunity to move them I don't have the um, activate any formation marker yet that is something that can that I can pick up for a VP um, subtract or I give the VPs to the German player uh, I can pick up the activate any formation marker uh, which is a lot more helpful so yeah I think what we're gonna do is we're just not gonna have the third tanks in we'll just leave them out and instead we'll put in the other markers This could be rough. This could be a very rough decision. Okay, so let's go ahead and see who goes first for the Germans. We got uh, eighth Panzer. Eighth Panzer. All right, so they're mainly located here, and we also have reinforcements to bring up. So let me go ahead and move the reinforcements up and then think about what I'm going to do for my attack here. And when I come back, we'll actually launch uh, the 8th Panzer's uh, moves, for lack of a better word. <laughs> so here's as far as the 8th uh, Panzer reinforcements made it. You can see they started down here on this X and have slowly begun to make their way up there. Uh, I think I looked at these forces before, at the beginning of the turn, but... Just so we remind ourselves what we have here, we're finally getting some artillery, which is very nice. We have an armored car here, which is going to be helpful for uh, letting other stacks conduct mobile attacks, like this one, for example. Uh, I've got two very powerful motorized infantry units and a recon unit there. Uh, that in itself is a potent stack. I mean, this 612 was at uh, 15 uh, and 714, <laughs> 17 on the defense, 18 on the defense. Uh, what we'll probably do is we'll end up trying to get these guys together. But I just moved this guy up a little further because he had seven movement, and we're trying to get them as close to our comrades in arms as possible so that maybe on the next activation he might be able to get in the game, as they say. Get in the game. Okay. Now we have to deal with this. And, of course, my main targets are Soltsy. And I'm a little less concerned about the 202. I mean, I would like to just swoop down there and take them out before they get a movement and can stack because now they are freed from their restriction on stacking. As you remember the rules say only two units could stack in a hex. Now they can go up to the stacking limit of nine which means that basically these infantry could just one more could join that stack right and that would just be more defense points. You know it's tougher to knock out a 12 defense stack. Um, but of course I have those follow-up elements, right? So I've got these guys coming up. I also have the third motorized that's going to come up. I haven't really decided what they are, but this is a potent stack right here. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to let my 8th uh, Panzer units who have already moved up this road, we're just going to keep concentrating on Soltsy because we've got to take advantage of getting the initiative here. We can pound this city a little bit, hopefully. Uh, I mean, we're pretty close to taking this hex, and this is the victory point hex, and it's a town. So if we can grab that hex, we can start begin building defensive fortifications or even moving up further because the 70th hasn't gone yet. And although they are a lumbering giant, as you can kind of see there in the... It's really bright today in Portland again. Another great day of sun. They are going to start getting their act together. It's going to take them a little bit to get down the line and decide what they're doing. But they're a potent force. And there's lots and lots of really powerful infantry there, like some 5.5s five and some 6.5s. There's a lot of 6.5s. Uh, and of course, they got like a 6 artillery. So these guys are not to be trifled with, you know hardcore stuff here. I also think that if we get down to Soltsy and start really focusing on taking it, let me get this so I can get a nice angle there, less square, 
that's going to also allow us to maybe nab some easy free points. I mean, we've got HQ hanging out here, just kind of in the open, and an artillery unit. That would be a nice sniping target, and I probably will try to go for that. We also have this tank here from the third tanks. We know it's not moving, so it can probably be sniped later. And then also, just six points of defense here of the 21st tanks would be a nice opportunity to take that out and secure the town. There's not a lot of defense there, so... <sighs> Let me take another break and see what I can get in terms of attack odds on there, or if I'm going to try to just jump ahead and start mauling uh, HQ units in the back to get some nice, easy victory points. I am negative four in the hole, so it probably would be a good idea to start uh, getting those units. So let me take a look, and I'll be right back. Looking over the options, I'm going to try something that either is going to be really awesome and shows how poorly I planned this defense of Sultsy as the Soviets, which I clearly did. I should not have brought these 202 out so far. I really should have let them defend the city. Um, that, that decision would have looked less bad had I won the initiative and been able to have gotten even some people down into Sultsy. If I'd have been able to get the 21st tanks, I could have really reinforced the city. Unfortunately, that didn't happen. So now I've left myself open to some pretty devastating overruns, I think. And I believe I've done this, the calculation's correct. What we're gonna do is we're gonna overrun with a stack here because it is all my weakened tanks, which sadly only amounts to six points of attack. But I also have this motorcycle infantry and this armor car that can come along for the ride, so to speak. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take them and we're gonna go overrun uh, this HQ. Now the reason I have to think about this a lot is because this HQ underneath it has that bad boy, a seven uh, artillery unit. So it's a regiment of artillery. It provides seven points. It's really ridiculous. However, this is maybe my one time to strike it. And even though it can use its seven points in defense, uh, which makes it a pain, this could be my one time to get to it and knock it out for good if I could actually do this. Um, because overruns, normally you can't, uh, you can't bring in artillery coordination. But if there is an artillery unit in the hex being overrun, one unit can use its support strength. The rest have to use their defense strength if there's more than one unit there. Uh, and the other nice thing about well, it's, I mean, so automatically we know if we overrun it, he's going to use his he's going to use his uh, artillery shells. So that's good. He won't be able to use it for the rest of the turn because obviously he's going to want to have that seven defense or he'll be totally overwhelmed. Um, but the uh, the other side about having overrun is that HQ units can never be the lead unit in a stack being attacked. So this guy can't even be with his high with his five rating. It's going to, have to be a four ER rating person defending this stack. And if we attack with the uh, motorcycle infantry or even the armor car, that's a seven. So while we might be getting really low odds, like one to one mobile attack, um, we're going to get a minus three on the on the. The shift, and we could even bring a plane in because the Germans can actually use close air support in overrun combat because they're they have greater training. <sighs> I mean, it definitely lowers the chance that we'll actually get a retreat by a lot. So I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna get. I'm getting risky. You know, I, I, this may not even be that risky. I bet other players looking at this and going, "Geez, that's like the obvious move." Um, but let's take a look. Let's see how this goes. So we're gonna bring all these guys over. They all have six movement. We're gonna go. And one, this is don't, This is going to be two, because these guys do not exert a zone of control, as you can see by their yellow stripe. So this is two, uh, and then we're going to overrun there. So it's plus one, and the cost to get in the hex. This is just a clear hex, so uh, what do we say? We said and one, two. This is going to be plus two, so it's four total movements to go in that hex. We're going to bring these guys over as well. Get you together. So it's and one, and two, three, Four, five, so they can make it. So everybody here is going to attack, overrun style. And okay, so let's do. Let's go through our overrun sheet. Make sure we get everything right, because I kind of messed up in the beginning. So we have non-disrupted red box MA units only. Plus we have an armor, uh, and we have a car. We have an armor car. We have both those. We have stacking limits. We're fine. We did the plus one cost for overrun. We can't do an overrun during rain or cross rivers. Fortified lines, prohibited hexes, towns, strong points, and from a hex covered by multiple enemy zones control. We're totally good there. Artillery and ground unit coordination not allowed. The defender can have one artillery unit provide support. We discussed that. Uh, I can use one air unit for cast. Um, the Soviet does not get cast. And then we just do a mobile combat. So let's go ahead and calculate what we got here. Uh, since we don't have to do any of those rolls in the beginning, oh, do I want to use a plane? <sighs> I am just going to bring a plane in because I really need this combat to go successfully. 
So I'm going to try to bring that guy in. I won't be using command points, oh, although I do have just so many command points. No, I'm going to, well, I say that. I really need this roll. It's a plus, actually, it's a mobile sequence, so we get plus one. So I'd have to roll a four or less. So yeah, we're going to go ahead and use these two points for this art artillery coordination, or geez, close air support coordination. Okay, so the overall die roll modifier is minus one because we got minus two for command points, but also plus one for being in a mobile sequence. Oh, didn't make it, got a six. So that actually would have been, actually no, that's a, that's a pass because it's minus one, so we got a five. So we actually did, we got it, all right, sweet. So let's calculate what we got here in the odds. We already, we, already, eh, we already know the terrain offers um, no defensive benefit. You, When you're using overrun, you have to look at the terrain effects chart because some terrain provides much better overrun defense. A clear hex, unfortunately, does not. But like, for example, uh, a woods hex is plus one DRM to overrun. It doesn't provide any combat bonus, but if you're doing an overrun that hex, you have to take a DRM uh, modifier. Here we don't because it's just a clear hex and we're overrunning it. So what we're going to do here is calculate what we have. So the artillery is going to use its inherent defense, which is seven, and we have one there. So we're dealing with, let's move this guy over. Uh, we're actually at nine to eight. So it's really one to one. If we look at our die roll modifiers, we're going to have the lead unit be um, the armored car. He's down, no, he's not there. We'll make him the lead unit. Okay. So you can see the ER differential there between that and the artillery unit, which has to be the lead unit. is three. Oh man, I'm making kind of a mess. Should probably be using my tweezers there. So we know we have a minus three ER, minus one CAS. Um, we don't have a combined arms bonus. Actually, do we? Because we have, we might have a cab bonus on this. Hold on. If the attacking force has an armored unit, we do. And we do have a motorcycle infantry. So we're good. We're actually going to get a minus one there too for Wow, this is, this is the most you can get. Um, a minus five to the roll. So this actually is looking much, much better. I didn't realize we were gonna get the CAS and uh, combined arms support, um, or combined arms bonus, I should say, the cap. So we have minus five to the roll on a one-to-one. -one. We're doing a mobile combat. Let's roll the die. Okay, three. So that, that automatically goes to zero. I don't think you can go below zero. So zero on a one-to-one -one is defender one retreat. So that's super big for us because essentially we get rid of that guy. He's out. That's big. That was so big here with this unit. This is a pain in the butt artillery unit. It can be very devastating and it's gone. So we automatically get a victory point. We're at negative three now. Um, and now the defender must retreat. And he's also disrupted, because when you do an overrun combat, any unit that retreats has to go two hexes. The attacker decides where they go, um, but they have to follow certain rules. Like, I can't make him go through this hex, because that's enemy... It's a vacant hex with enemy's under control. I have to pick a clear path, and he's honestly just going to go one, two. And he also gets a disruption marker. Uh, let me double check that if nothing else. He might lose his points. Let me see. If successful, the defender retreats two hexes per discretion of the attacking player, and you place a disruption marker on the retreating units, flipping artillery units that are fired inside. Okay, so it's okay. Um, okay, so there we go. He goes there. Now we can advance two hexes. So here's how, look how we're going to do this. We're going to go one. Ooh, this is tempting. I really could... could probably overrun that stack again because I think I believe I had extra movement points, right? Because I did, oh, is it and one, and two, three, four, five. So yeah, this guy's, these guys have two more movement, which is enough to do another overrun. And I believe those guys who were, oh, where were they here? So it was and one, two, 
yeah, three, four. So they also have two more movements. So everybody can overrun that sec again. So because we can keep overrunning and we're not trapped by enemy zones of control, because you would have to stop and attack that hex, if you overrun and the hex you overrun into has an enemy zone of control in it, you have to attack the unit projecting that enemy zone of control or you stop moving. So here we've got them. They're going to keep overrunning because they can. So this is, this is looking pretty good now. This is looking real good. So we have the movement. This will be the final amount of movement we can take. Well, pa let me pause for a second because I advanced and then I moved. Let me see if I have to just, let me just take a look at the rule book real quick. I hate to be really finicky on this, but I want to get it right. And this is a big move. So let me check real quick. I'm back. And it turns out I can. You can advance. And then if you have any remaining movement points, you can keep overrunning. So we just demonstrated that we do have enough. We have just enough to come in here. And now this is a three, a three stack. So now we're actually going to have really good odds because again, this guy can't defend, this guy has to defend, and he has a four. He can't react, move, or do anything like that because we are overrunning him. So this is a <laughs> this is gonna be the nice advantage. This is probably the most powerful overrun I've had um, playing this playing this road series. So this is this is showing you the power of red box movement here. Okay, so let's get these guys over here so we get a little more focused on that battle, and I'll have a little room to write. Although I'm left-handed and I'm setting myself up for disaster here by reaching over, but that, that's just the way it goes, right? Left-handed people are crazy. So we're going to attack here. We're not going to bring close air support in on this one because I think we're going to get much more favorable odds. Uh, so we're not going to do that. There is no artillery to for them to use, and uh, so we don't have to worry about that. So let's go ahead and just calculate the attack here. The terrain, no bonus, no defensive bonus for that guy. So we automatically know we're going to lead with the armored car again, and uh, he's going to have to use his stacking tank here as part of uh, as the lead unit, so it's a four. So we might automatically have a minus three ER differential. We know we have the minus one combined arms bonus. We're not going to do casts, so that's automatically a four, minus four. And the odds are this is a three defense stack and we are rolling with nine attack units. Two, four, six, yeah, that's right, right? Yeah, two, four, six, eight, nine, yeah. So this is why I brought this guy along. I was thinking about keeping him back to, hit, to help attack Solzy, but then I was like, no, if I do this overrun and I have it all correct, I'm going to get three to one odds here. So we're three to one. We got the minus four shift. So this is going to be probably awesome. Yep. Okay, so I roll a two. That goes to zero, and that's not good for these guys. Um, on three to one, getting a zero is defender two retreat. This guy automatically dies, and that guy automatically dies. He's just a one-step unit. Okay, that was that's totally, totally, totally sweet. So that gets me, wow, four victory points here for killing an HQ and a tank unit. So we're up to one, we're up to positive victory points. We have one victory point. We're, we're back in, baby, we're back. And I can also advance again because of that overrun. And this is going to put me in a great position. So what I could do, I have to go. I have to take the Defender Hex. I thought about maybe if I could just retreat back to Solzy and just try to, to load up on that Hex. But now I'm right next to the Disruptive guy, and I can just attack him uh, during regular attack. Because, of course, Overrun, as you remember, is a function of movement, not of combat. Um, so because we did that, now we need to go back and actually figure out what the rest of these guys are going to do. Um... I need to see how these forces are going to maybe try to get up to Solzy and attack it. So I'm going to take another break, and then we'll come back. So we're going to take this wide-angle uh, approach here because I have some of these units in the rear. They're going to move up, and then we'll get closer in on Solzy. Uh, we're definitely going to be attacking Solzy because uh, I need to be getting that victory hex if I can. So these guys, it has a uh, self... By the way, I found out what this was. This is a self-propelled... And I was like, what is this unit? This is a self-propelled uh, anti-tank unit. You learn something new every day. They're going to just cozy on up to the 21st tanks here in Salt Sea. So they're going to go and one, two, right? Because of the zone of control effect. So there. They stop there. Uh, this guy could keep going, but they they have to stop because they have orange circle. Meanwhile, if we look at this Manstein stack, it's just got a bunch of armor and uh, motorized infantry, all with values of six. So what we're going to do here is we're... If I can get... Dun, 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 dun. Damn, you so big. The stack is so big. So we'll just pick up my hands, my grubby, grubby hands, and uh, get oils all over the counter. That's super great for longevity. Okay. Uh, what we're going to do is here, we're going to avoid going through the zone of control here. So we're going to go one, two, 
3 and 4 and 5, 6 puts you right there. So we can get we can nuzzle right up to that unit. And then of course we're going to take our artillery stack here, which is just loaded with some artillery. We also got like a anti-tank unit to help give a little defense there and a rocket unit. Oh, I need to kind of get that rocket unit up. Uh, it's going to have to do some funky movement too because we want to avoid, because remember they're orange circle here, so we, we have to avoid zones of control. So what we're going to do is we're going to go and 1 and 2, 3, 4, and 5. We'll put them there. Eh, that could be a little risky uh, because as uh, now we can get closer because we actually So this could be a little risky, only in the sense that if the 202 get activated, they might be able to come up here and start attacking my artillery stack. But it's fairly well defended, and we have units that can combat react uh, to come reinforce it. So I'm going to be a little risky and keep my artillery sort of hanging out in the open. Uh, I'm honestly not that afraid of for it, but, you know, that stuff happens. Okay, so that's all the movement we're going to take. And now we'll do our attacks, which, as you can see, we're going to be here on Soltsy itself. I'm going to be attacking... This thing, it has to be an assault combat because he's in a town. Uh, and then over here, we're going to just do a mobile combat on this disrupted unit, and it, it's going to die. It's going to die pretty quickly because disruption is pretty bad for your stats. Um, so let's go ahead and do this uh, automatic die combat. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it would be a miracle for this unit not to uh, bite the dust here. So we got a disruptive unit. What does disruption do? So this is a good time to talk about disruption because this is the first time I've actually had it on a unit. If you inflict disruption, it affects all units in a stack. It gives minus 2 MA and it's cumulative with other modifications. You get a minus 2 ER that's cumulative with out of supply. So he loses 2 movement points and 2 ER. I mean, that puts him down to 3 ER automatically. So not good for him. You also can't uh, conduct overruns, combat refusals, or reaction movement. If you're artillery, you have no support strength. You can advance a max of one hex after combat. You can't construct, complete, or remove strong points, and you don't qualify for a combined arms bonus. Um, so it hurts you in all sorts of different ways. So let's go ahead and do this attack real quick because this shouldn't take very long. We're not even going to bring a plane in because it's pretty worthless for the Soviets. Um, that unit's pretty much going to bite the dust. Germans are not going to bring a plane in. There's no artillery to coordinate. Um, because this is an, uh, a mobile combat and everybody's attacking from one hex and they're all the same formation, there's no combat coordination going on here. So if we just break it down. We got 9 to 1. This automatically goes down to uh, 7 to 1 odds. That's like the highest you can have. We'll have the armored car take take the lead. So this ER is three now because of disruption. So we actually have a minus four on there. And of course we're gonna get minus one for combined arms bonus. Uh, defensively, he gets a plus one for the village uh, because we're attacking through a bridge text. And let me make sure about that on river. Because I think, I don't believe that prohibits uh, mobile combat. Let's double check. Yeah, I think because that was a bridge, we can do it. We couldn't do that if it was just no bridge, but since there is a bridge, we can we can actually do that. So we're gonna get a minus, God, we're gonna get a minus five to our roll. It's seven to one mobile combat. Yeah, so you know we got a six um, minus five equals a one, and that's that's totally you're done. You're done. Actually, you can go to eight to one on the mobile combat. I didn't realize that. Okay, seven to one on assault is the max odds. Eight to one is the max odds on the mobile. So we picked ourselves up another um, three victory points. So now we're up to four victory points. The question now becomes, do I want to advance? And by doing so, give myself access to the southern area in which I could probably get down to Volot, maybe? Or do I just stick there? And I probably should just stay there because I don't want any of these units that are gonna come down the pike. Um, to start ganging up or like get free access. Let's, let's make a little roadblock so they can't just immediately get to Salty and provide um, relief for the units that are probably gonna be hurting there fairly quickly. So let me, I knocked over a stack of units because I'm not doing so great. Okay, 
that was sad. You can't see that. Off camera, I knocked over some units. I just put it back together. The magic of off camera action. Okay. Let's get to the main event here because this is going to be an assault combat. Still not looking great uh, for the quote unquote home team. So we got a total of six defense points here. Um, we're going to declare mobile combat. So we go through our usual things. Can he react move? Yeah, he can react move, um, but that's not going to be that great for him. I mean, I guess he could kind of react move down and kind of get away there, uh, but that's giving up Saltsy. <sighs> this is a tough, tough decision. You're going to be basically giving up Saltsy to maybe live another turn, but like then you leave, once you leave the town, you lose the assault protection it has, you lose the DRM bonus, which is significant as well. Uh, so I'm gonna hold out. I probably should run away, but honestly, like we just we gotta do something to hold up these forces, or they're just gonna be blowing through the lines here. So we'll stay. This could be a bad decision, but you know we have six defense points, so we know that. So we're not gonna react move. We have no artillery um, for the defender to coordinate. Uh, the attacker probably will. So let's start looking at the odds here, because that's gonna tell me whether or not I'm gonna be using artillery. So we know we're fighting something to the six, because we know he has six defense points. If we, so here we have, what, three, four, I believe, yeah, those are three, so that's four. Uh, and I know the stack is 21, because I counted it earlier. So we have 25 points to six. I'd like to get this up to 30, because it gives me five to one assault odds, and let's just go for overkill if we can. So I need to come up with five points on the attack. Um, let's see. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to fire off that artillery unit and this artillery unit because eight is overkill. But if I don't make my roll, oh, you can't see those guys. But if I don't make my roll with them, then I get half unless I just totally whiff the roll and I get zero. And half will still give me, actually it won't. I need five points, don't I? Damn. Okay, we'll throw this three in as well. Yep, yep, yep. So we're going to go for overkill on this, on this attack. So I, just, I want to clear this town. I want it done. Uh, so we're going to roll for an efficiency check. We're going to use Manstein on this. We're going to give him two points. He's going to use it to coordinate his artillery. So it's a plus one, minus two. So overall, minus one, rolling the die. Right, I got it. I got a three. So I get all that artillery. It gets fired. And I get four, eight, uh, 11 extra points of attack. Uh, you can never add more points than you already have there. So if I only had like five attack points, I could not have added 11. I'd only been able to add five. But since I already have 25 points and we have 11, so now we got 36 to six. And that actually gives me much better odds. That actually bumped me up two shifts. Okay. So we did that. Uh, we don't have any, though we have to do combat coordination because it's a mobile attack, but we're attacking from more than one hex. So we'll make our lead unit... Um, and I really just hate to do a tank, but we'll just go ahead and use a tank. Because we'll still suffer from armor attrition if something goes bad anyway. Um, or not really, we won't suffer from armor attrition. I'm sorry, I lied there. Okay, so we're going to use him as that. So the ER differential between that and its armor car is minus one ER. They have a terrain because they're in a town, and towns provide plus two DR into combat. And I get a minus uh, one for combined arms bonus. I think I do, right? Do I have motorcycle? I may not actually have motorcycle here. Oh no, I have motorized infantry, so that works. Okay, so those cancel each other out. So we actually have zero on the roll. Um, we have six to one assault odds. So we're gonna roll that six to one. Oh uh, wait, did I do my combined? Oh, I didn't do my coordination roll. So we're gonna take that tank. Um, we're not gonna spend any points on this. All right, so it's a six plus one because it's mobile is seven, so we passed our ER check, so we don't have any other negatives here. So once again, back to zero there, zero modifier on a six to one our, our assault attack, six to one. So let's roll the die. All right, we got another six. So this, let's see what this is. Six to one with a six. Defender one retreat. Ooh, could he have done a no retreat? Uh, I might have been able to do a no retreat there. I didn't think about that.
No, I couldn't, because it has to have a strong point or have my HQ with me, and I don't. Um, anyway, okay, so Defender 1 Retreat. Well, it had to happen. I ran out of room on my phone right as I was finishing up this combat result. So let's quickly do that, and then uh, we'll see who comes up next, right? Because this has been a pretty devastating turn. So if you remember, the results were a Defender 1 Retreat. That means this guy bites it. Um, and this guy's got a retreat. And because it was a mobile combat, he has to go back two hexes. So I think he'll go back one, obviously, he has to go there. And um, he can go here because these guys do not exert a zone of control across a river. They actually don't have any unit that can cross without using all of its movement points. So like infantry, I believe, exerts uh, Zok across rivers. Um, but armor units, things like that, they can't. They require, I think red box movements require their entire movement to get across a river. So he's safe to go here and not do an ER check to see if he has to take a step loss. And this does not count as ending an enemy's auto control, which he can't do. Uh, so there we go. There's that retreat, and of course I get to advance after combat. And I will take that hex and then move that one. And these guys cannot advance, right? Because actually he could, but no one else can. And actually, I, ooh, should I have him advance? Yeah, why not? Yeah, we'll have him advance. Just so that they can't like sneak in and hold that city hex. Uh, that might make him vulnerable to attacks, but... Um, you know, he's got two defense strength. He's in a town now. I can combat react to some guys, so I'm not too worried about that. Okay, so that was really effective. Seizing Salt City, getting rid of two HQs, getting rid of some army units. Now we're rolling. Now we're rolling. Um, that's Blitzkrieg, baby. And it's still, still working. Still kind of working. Although that giant wall of 70 is probably going to put a stop to that. So, eh, you know. Well, let's see. Maybe the 70 will come up uh, now. So let's go ahead and see the... See the first Soviet chit. Oh, the 237. And that is our units that are located in the north up there. We got some of those guys about to come in because, of course, they're worrying about the third motorized moving up the road. Uh, so I think what we'll do is we'll try to figure out what kind of defensive position we want to take with these guys. And I'll probably just go ahead, they're not going to do any combats. So I think what I'll do is I'll just get them in position, show you where they went, and then we'll just keep moving. Because I don't want these turns to drag on forever, and uh, I want to show the action and not necessarily just a ton of movement. Okay, so let's stop here and let's move those guys. Okay, so this is the final uh, position I moved the 237 to. I brought two of these units here because um, there was already a stacking third tank unit there. So this is not the best defense I could put on this city, which is a victory point location. Or I guess Utragash is, but this is sort of a city that holds it. Um, so, you know, that's going to be a nice little stopping force for the third mechanizer over there. And then I took this guy. He's probably going to come hold this city as just sort of a backup. I moved all my artillery and some of my anti-tank units and my engineering guy. He's down here. And then these guys have snuck or snaked down there on the trail because, as we discussed, sort of, I think... Last turn, this is a good jumping off point to come down these places, and as you can see, um, make sure I got that, yeah. you can start assaulting the line here, you can snake down these trails and cut off the road here. So as soon as these guys move up, this force can kind of threaten to come down and pocket them, or at least cut off their supply. Uh, it can be devastating. In my last game, they were pretty devastating. It was difficult to get out of the pocket they set up, because they, there are just a lot of units they bring to bear. Uh, but, you know, now we're advancing so fast and far that things have changed. Things have changed. So we'll have to figure out what to do there. Okay, so that one's that one. Uh, let's see who the Germans get this time. Third motorized. So let's go ahead and move the third motorized because they're... These are the sort of backup units, and you know, they just need to get in the game. So we got a five, a four, and a five, and these are all sixes, really powerful. Let's get these guys up on the northern road. Let's get them cracking. So, six, okay, and 
1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 5 and oh I can't go that far because that guy's there so we'll just keep him there normally we'd like to get as far as we can but that, that'll do that's fine and then because of that we, uh, we know that our five units are going to be just two spaces behind and of course our sad and lonely rocket guy will be even further far behind all right so that's the reinforcement movements. I think what we're going to try to do with these guys is figure out the fastest way to link up with them. That might include coming off Sydney and running up. It may also be going to uh, Dubrova and uh, moving up here. You know, we'll see. We may even go further down. Oh, you can't even see what I'm talking about. We may even go further down here and kind of cut up. There's a railroad there. It would be nice to link up with those. But uh, we'll see. We'll have to wait till the next turn when we get their activation marker to see where those guys are going to go. But we also have these fellas, and they gotta kinda get over there. So let's just start moving, because what we want to do is, is uh, I mean, they're pretty well defended there, so we're gonna have to start just thinking about how we want to make this attack happen. And hopefully maybe the 8th Panzer in the south will draw attention away, and we'll be able to have slightly weaker forces defending. So, what do we got here? We got our six movement guys, the M, HQ, and the five. Let's move the five. So, one, two, and three, and four, and five. So, let's do one, and two, and three, and four, and five, six. And one, and two, and three. Yeah, we'll just go there because they kind of need good defending. And here we'll go ahead and take this guy and go, and one, and two, and three. And just hold down the uh, artillery unit there. Now, the reason I was able to move there and not really worry about counterattack is that, well, the uh, 237's already gone. As you can see, they moved. So I'm not really worried about them coming up this way and bringing a group attack or coming over here. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to launch an attack or anything on these guys because there is 10 points of defense there, and I can only muster currently 9, 11, 14. I can uh, 14 attack. So I really need to get my other forces up here quickly because this could get ugly uh, very, very soon. Okay, so that was the third motorized unit. Not a whole lot going on there. All right, Soviet troops coming out. Oh, the 70th. They finally get into the action. All right, so there's it's a lot of guys. It's a lot of dudes. Um, it's definitely the most powerful force I think you start off with is the, Sovs, the Soviets, for sure. Most put together, strongest equipped in terms of their numbers would indicate. Um, not able to do mobile combat because they're all infantry, but I think, right, you don't get any more guys. No, but still, they're kind of overwhelming. Actually, they do have an armored car somewhere, so they can do mobile attacks if I can find that armored car. Let's get these guys into action uh, because I think we're going to need to really start moving down that road to Saltsy. It's looking bad. So let's get the guys out and move them. I moved all the 70th, and this is sort of why I decided. I kind of broke them up into two groups. One that was closer to this road is going to come down the road here. And this group that was more located around this northern part by the marshes sort of took the trails, and what their their goal is to come down here and then eventually take advantage of most of these trails right here and cross the stream and put pressure if they can here and meet up with these guys coming down. It also has the added effect of keeping it so that the panzer units here don't get any ideas of maybe shooting the gap and coming up here. Um, I mean, they still probably could, but then I'd probably be able to react pretty quickly with those guys, and some of these guys could come back up here. I mean, it could be done. It can definitely be done. But since the 8th Panzer's already activated once, I don't, I'm, I'm less afraid of them doing the shoot the gap uh, theory. So coming down, if we had one more activation, it'd be great. I could get these guys in a prime position, but instead I think they're just about to be assaulted by elements of the 8th Panzer. So hopefully we have some good stacks here should be able to repulse a fair amount of attacks. I mean, this stack alone is my power stack. 15 defense and uh, 16 attack. 
So pretty good. And I have some good artillery in the back. Uh, so yeah, this, this, is, this is the defensive position I've set up, and uh, we'll see how, how well it holds up. Okay, so that was the 70th. So now we'll pick out the Soviet or German activation marker. What do we got? Oh, our friend's a third motorized again. That's actually good. This might allow me. This might allow the Soviets to draw the 21st tanks next turn. Uh, there's a one in third chance they'll get that. If they do, we can reinforce uh, more of Solzy. We can start getting more things together and figure out what we want to do, and and maybe even save this unit from destruction. Uh, because now we're back to the third motorized. So let's figure out where these reinforcements are going to go. And and then we'll just move them. So one thing I didn't do is I should have been putting activation markers on these guys. Like that's an army unit, that Arco. Uh, this rocket unit's an army unit. Uh, because they have orange circle movement, they can be activated twice by any formation uh, in one turn. So I should have been putting like first activation on them here. Um, it's less of an issue now because uh, I don't think the Eighth Panzer is going to commandeer using these units. I think the Third Motorized is going to keep a hold of them. Um, but it's something to think about when you're playing and you have a lot more HQs around. And you need to be more diligent about marking units as either uh, having just activated or finished activating if they're army units. Okay, so let's start moving, guys. Oh, yeah, we got the stack of sixes here. Okay, so what's the best way to get up here? There's not a lot of great routes, to be honest. Um, I think we're just going to have to go for Dubrova because Dubrova, if you kind of notice up there, Dubrova leads up to a crossing here. There's no other bridges that I can utilize except for the Shili. I wonder, is that even worth it? But that's kind of out of my way uh, to go that way. Although I could probably get up there fairly. Maybe I will take that road. And, you know, I say that and I'm like, wait a minute. Didn't I just notice this? Of course. Because so I can just take this bad boy up. And that's fairly close. Um, okay, so let's try doing that. So we got six movement. Off camera here, we're going to be coming up. And one, and two, and three, and four, five, and six. So that's pretty good. We got pretty far up there, actually. Um, these guys will not be able to make it as far. They can still get places, I think. What do we got? Five movement here. Oh, so many hairs. Sorry about that. Let's move this guy first. He's got four. And one, and two, and three, and four. So he doesn't even quite make it up there. Uh, and because so these are all fives, yeah. And one, and two, and three, and four, and... Five. Look at that. It's pretty good. I'm really so far away. I think uh, next turn we should be able to get up there and really start harassing the northern road. It's going to take a while for this payoff. Um, but that's okay. The only danger, of course, is that I've left myself totally exposed by the 183rd down here. So some of these, some of these guys may have to hang back. Not super powerful. I may have to pull back some of my other 8th Panzer elements. Uh, that are just cruising and crushing up here. I have to pull some of those guys back um, Just to be able to help out with what is probably going to inevitably be the 183rd crashing in uh, But let's go ahead and see do these are these guys gonna move what can I do to get better positioning my motorized units here? Hmm. Uh, you know like I could try to just go around and try to take Utrugosh. Of course, I'm going to be putting myself out of supply then, and not likely I'll be able to get supply easily restored, considering how many units there are around here. <sighs> I could begin putting pressure on him. I hate to just not move these guys. It's just I don't have any attack power to do anything with them. Like, I don't know... Like what well, that's the greater scene, right? So I don't even know how to move these guys to where they don't can't just get swarmed. Um, I mean what I can do is just begin setting up sort of my ability. 
Oh, I just hate not moving guys. Like, I really don't like it. Um, yeah, I just don't have enough. And I can't do mobile combat. If I could even get a mobile combat off, I would think about that. Um, we're going to have to wait. These guys can't do very much. So I think what we'll do is we'll just sort of hang tight there. I mean, I could move them across the stream and start putting pressure there. But then if I don't get the initiative next turn, I could let them zoom up and take that. So uh, I really dislike that. I really dislike that move. And that's probably a very poor move on my part to not move them or to not threaten. Um, yeah, this would just cost four movement points to even get here. One across the stream, two for the woods, one for the zone of control. And then so I couldn't even power through and take Utrecht or make an attack on this guy, which I would like to do. Um, that's just not going to happen. Mm, I don't know how I feel about that, but that's probably that's just going to be the way it is. I can't make you know when you lose efficiency like this, that's not great. Uh, you want to be the most efficient person you can when you're moving your units, but I think this is just going to have to be how it is. Not great. Okay, I just put some markers just to show you because now I actually I'm going to be official. There they are, the final activation markers. Uh, for those army units that moved, because they moved twice in one turn. Okay, so that was the third motorized. Let's see what's next. One eighty-third. I kind of wish they'd have gone a little later in the turn, because then I could actually have a better idea of, of what I want to do with them. But um, it's okay. So let's take a little, take a wide look here. So as you can see, there they are, and we have our idea of where we want to go up this northern road. Uh, I mean, I could kind of sneak over here and try to be again aggressively cutting them off, which may not be a half bad idea because they'd be able to easily cut me off, but threatening to cut their supply lines and doing it in their rear because they won't be getting they do get some more reinforcements next turn. Oh, some pretty good ones, actually. So I could threaten to cut here, and what that would do is force these guys to react, and then also maybe force any units that came from over there. It would take them longer to get back. That's not really going to happen, because if you look at the reinforcements, um, it's probably going to be really not the great of a angle there, but there's a lot coming in next turn, that whole row there. So that's more than enough to deal with uh, understrength units that include the 183rd. So it might be a better idea for the 183rd to instead head up here to Gorky and just start trying to hopefully get up there and get in a position where they can build strong points maybe next turn and, and hold that um, and then be able to launch attacks much more easily from, from Gorky or Zapolia to the, the road up here, which you can't see because once again I'm doing that off camera, to this road up here. It just gives you a little bit closer jumping off point. So let's go ahead and try to see how we want to do this. I got my thing. Yeah, so this is my good stack because it also has like a zero stacking recon unit with it. So that's great. And they all move, what, four? Some of the guys move five. We're going to move four. So it's and one and two and three and. Go ahead and put them on that. And these guys are four. They enter. One, and two, and three, and four. Go ahead and back that road up. And then we'll go ahead and he comes in one, and two, and three. We'll just keep him there. I uh, wonder if I should be leaving somebody to stay with him. Because he came in here, so it's one, and two and three and four, but he can't go there. This is three, costs too much to cross. I just am worried about the eighth panzer units over there sniping it. And uh, that would be really devastating because this four artillery unit is actually very nice. I don't think they're gonna be able to snipe it, so we'll just keep it there. That could be foolhardy. I might pay for that, but uh, we'll just keep them there and they're good. Okay, so that was pretty easy. That's the 183rd. So the only thing left for the Germans is the 8th Panzer. And 
that means we have to figure out where our reinforcements are going to go in light of this incursion by the 183rd. But it also means we need to figure out what the Sultsy units are going to do and how they're going to either begin to... I could take this turn and, and begin building strong points, uh, or I could start just keep pushing and crushing units around me, which just may be the better idea. So let me stop and take a minute again to think about it, and uh, we'll come back. All right, so we're back with the uh, final activation for the 8th Panzer. It's the final uh, German activation for this turn, and then there will be two Soviet activations. And really the Soviets kind of got some very bad luck with the draws here. Um, not only did they not win initiative, but the units that would have been most able to flow into Sultsi and prevent the total German domination that is there now would have been the 202 and the 21st tanks. Uh, they didn't get those activation markers. They drew every other activation marker but those two, um, which severely hamstrings their ability to defend Sultsi. And because I pulled the 202 out to get that motorcycle infantry uh, a turn ago, uh, that was probably a mistake. Uh, now it's looking like a big mistake. So, and probably one that's going to get worse here, because I've spent a lot of time thinking about how I want to defend Soltsy. If I don't win the initiative, this is my last activation as the Germans. So I want to make sure that these attacks I'm about to pull off, I can still do damage, but I also want to be able to defend Soltsy from maybe the inevitable counterattack that might come from, say, the 70th as they get their act together next turn. If they happen to go before I can get my forces into play, that could be very devastating. Um, but immediately what I'm thinking of is, well, one, find a way to defend the town. Two, I need to get rid of this unit or move him or put a unit here and here because he is cutting off my supply. Uh, I kind of forgot about that. Uh, I mean, I didn't forget about it. I thought maybe my uh, reinforcements would get up the line quicker. They're not going to be able to get anywhere close. Um, I mean, they'll get close, but because of the zone of control movement uh, penalty, I won't be able to get my really good units close. I can get my armored car kind of close, um, and that's going to help out as we'll see. So bear with me as I kind of move these guys around, because what I'm going to try to do is overrun this guy, and attack this guy, and attack that guy. Uh, all while shuffling these forces around so that I can get a pretty good defensive assault scene. And here's how we're going to make that work. So first off, let's move our reserves, or reserves, jeez, our reinforcements up. So let's get them in the shot here. Let's move our artillery first. He's for this back. And one, and two, and three, and four, and five. Um, this HQ has uh, all six movements, got motorized infantry, and I believe a recon unit. Yeah, so we got and one, and two, and three, and four, and five. So he can't, oh, that's just out of your frame. As you notice, he can't go here because then it would, it would be six and, right? He's already got five movements, that would be five and a half plus one, six and. So he can't go any further, uh, but this armored car can. It has a nice little ability to, it has seven movement. So what we're gonna do here is and one and two and three, four, five, Six, seven. You might be thinking, why do you do that? Well, we're going to see in just a minute, because hopefully this is going to allow me to not take a stream crossing uh, modifier when I attack, because I'll have this one armored car here that is not crossing a stream to attack. So, as you'll see, that, that'll work out. If everything works out the way I want it to, this could be great. If not, uh, I might have just left an armored car hanging, and the 202 might just snipe it. So, you know, we're getting risky, but we're going to do it again. Uh, pushing our luck as the Germans has so far been a great idea, so let's keep doing it. Okay, here comes the jumble. So this stack, so what we're going to do is essentially these anti-air units and this um, self-propelled uh, anti-tank unit are going to hold this northern city hex, um, and then this stack is going to drop off one panzer in the southern city hex and then move the rest of its stack, and it's going to come down here and overrun, and it's going to be joined by that rocket unit, which is very potent and powerful and in a good position. Uh, meanwhile, this sort of stack of used artillery and anti-tank will join the leftover panzer here and pro provide the defense for the southern uh, city hex. Mainly, I'm just afraid of getting attacked by forces of the 70th coming up, but there's also the 21st tanks, and I would like to get rid of this uh, motorized infantry, um, but I just don't see a good way to get good odds on it or do it without putting myself in a really bad position. Okay, so let's go ahead and make those moves happen. Let's see. 
So I'm just going to put him right here because we're going to drop him off. But the rest of these guys are going to go... Hold on. Sometimes you can't just get everybody. So what we're going to do is we're going to go and one and two, three, because we're in the zone of control, and then we're going to overrun it, so that's uh, plus two more, so that's five, total movement. So we'll put him here, just to designate the fact that we're going to be overrunning. And then, yeah, just like I said, these guys are going to come up here, hold that, this guy got dropped off here. These artillery units are going to come and hang out with him. And then this unit joins those attackers there. Uh, and finally, these guys will move. Ah, I just can't quite get everybody in this stack. There we go. That's and, one and, because this projects a zone of control. Uh, if, if it was a silhouetted unit, it wouldn't project a zone of control across the river. But um, because it's an infantry unit, it uh, actually can. Uh, that's one of the nice advantages of infantry, uh, motorized infantry. So we got and, one and, two, and three, four, and we're going to attack that guy across the stream. But that'll just be a regular combat. I wasn't able to do an overrun, um, because as you can see, it took me four movement to get here, and it would take three movement to overrun this, one to get into that hex, one to cross the stream, and then one for the overrun. So I wouldn't have enough to do the overrun. That would be nice. Not totally required, though. This is a pretty weak unit. Okay, so let's do the overrun here. Let's get ourselves a little calculation room. So we're coming down here. Um, they can't do any reactions or any of that nonsense. Um, so I guess we just start calculating the odds, right? Do, 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 do. He's got, I believe, six. Am I right? Yeah, he's got six defense total. So he has six. And what do we have? We should have fairly potent forces. Got that five. Mancine, of course, is kicking it. We got nine guys. We got three, six there. So that's 11 plus 12 more. So what do we got? 23. So 23 total attack factors. Boy, wouldn't that be nice if we could just get up one more and we could have 24? Um, that's okay. I'm pretty, I'm pretty much going to be happy with three to one. Uh, mobile attack. That's going to be okay with me. Uh, now we'll check to do airplanes, close air support. Because we're overrunning, the Soviets cannot use their close air support, but we can because we're ballerific Germans and we trained for this. So we're going to try to roll for that. It is a mobile combat phase, so we get a plus one to our roll. I won't... Uh... <laughs> I won't be using... Um... Any modifiers here because I think I want to save that for possible combat coordinations on this stack. I'd like to get, I'd like to be able to take that out better. No, I'm not going to spend points, so we're going to have to actually roll pretty low here. Uh, I need to roll what is that, a four or less? Nope, we got a fat 10, so that's that airplane does not help us. Um, so we got three to one. Let's do the calculations for the DRMs. Um, this is clear terrain, so there's nothing that's going to help them there. Uh, I'm going to use my... Oh, I don't really want to use those guys. I'm going to drop off my... Okay, so what we're going to do is actually we're going to swap this out. I'd rather have my seven tank hang out with the stack and let this panzer hang out there. Okay, so I'm going to have my seven tank be the lead unit because I want that ER, I want a nice ER bonus. And they'll put their uh, five guy on top. Sorry, I'm making huge messes with my stacks here. Um, so because of that, we'll get minus two ER. We get a minus one combined arms bonus. Um, he doesn't have any terrain defense or anything that can help him. So that's a minus three to the roll on three to one combat. So let's see, minus three. Oh, do you see that? It kind of almost hit all those stacks. It's dangerous. Uh, that was a four. So it's a one. That's going to be very bad for these guys. Three to one mobile. A one. Defender two retreat. Now see what's interesting. If you, I, didn't, I haven't really looked at the CRT very much. But if you look at the CRT, you can see that at three to one, if we'd have gotten a 
three results. We could have had attacker one, defender two, retreat. So you can see those kind of holes that occur in the CRT where you think you have really good odds and instead you end up taking losses you did not anticipate. Okay, so we got defender two, retreat on that stack. This is good. So he takes that loss, it's a step loss, he'll take this one, and he's dead. And now he has to retreat. Now because it's an overrun, I decide the, the retreat path. Um, and I'm just going to have him go one, two. Um, I will advance. And this guy is disrupted. Anytime you use an overrun and you're successful, disrupted. Um, probably not going to be a big deal because if you remember, disruption goes away if you're at the end of the turn if you're not in an enemy zone of control. Um, I don't think this guy's going to be in enemy zone of control, but we'll go ahead and just mark him disrupted. Okay, so we did that attack. That was very successful. Now we can do our regular attacks. Oh yeah, this can go away. Didn't have anything happen there. So now we can do our regular attacks. Let's start with this guy, the tank. So it can react move because it's got five and we're not overrunning, so it's actually going to try to do that. Um, Oh, it got it. So it gets away. So if you react move, you get to, I believe, use half your MA. Let's double check that. So eligible units can move to half their MA when they get this. So we have half our MA. It's going to be two and a half. So you can see this will cost us one and a half. Uh, and that's about as far away as we can get. <laughs> I really can't go anywhere else, so that's unfortunate. Uh, that's okay, though. Stops that combat, right? That's what um, reaction... Actually, that was combat refusal. What was I thinking? I called that reaction movement. This is combat refusal. Um, my bad. I don't know why I called it that. Uh, I can retreat the stack two hexes. So actually, I can go two. So I'm going to go one, and we're going to go two and put them on the rough, because rough gives us some nice defense and against overruns and whatnot. Okay, so that's finished. So then we'll go to this attack. We're attacking those guys. They have eight defense. They can't react move. There's no combat refusal, and they can't do a no retreat. So we'll go ahead and just write down their eight up here. And we're attacking with... Oh, yeah, we do have to take away that. No, I have a rocket artillery. Where'd it go? Ah, making a huge mess. There it is. I need to flip him over. The rocket artillery is used, so it won't help us out this time. But that's okay. This attack is pretty powerful. So we got 12, 15, 18. So we got 20 attack factors against 8. So, and I can also use artillery. So that's our initial, right? So. The Soviets have no artillery or anything they can use. I actually have some artillery I can deploy right here. I need 24 total points to get the next shift. Do I have any other artillery hanging around? Let's see if this guy has got the artillery. No, but I think everything's fired. Okay, so we won't get a shift even if we brought that artillery unit in, so I think I'll just not use it, it's fine. So we have 20 to 8. Uh, we will be bringing in close air support, so will the Soviets. So they'll bring in their plane. I will bring in my plane. Um, we're not going to do any DRM modifiers uh, from command points. I'm not going to use those. So neither can the Soviets, so we'll roll for them. And for us, adding plus 1. Oh, wow. So weird. I'm getting weird rolls in this game. Two threes. So the planes cancel each other out, but they may get armor attrition rolls. Okay, so we did that. Uh, next thing we gotta do is combat coordination. I am attacking from two hexes in mobile, so we'll make uh, this armored car the lead unit, and I will spend two points on that. So this guy's close enough, he's within four hexes, so I'm gonna use that. So I get minus two, but plus one for mobile combat. Oh, so I get a nine, I don't pass. So because I didn't pass the combat coordination, we automatically know I get a plus two. 
for combat coordination failure. <laughs> then we look at the ER differential. It is minus two here, so that helps. And we got a minus one combined arms bonus, so we're going to get a total of negative one. All right, so on a two to one mobile attack with a negative one. Hmm, six. So it's a seven minus one is six. Oof, on a two to one. That is defender retreat. Oof, that was close. Okay, almost an armor attrition result. So, pretty tough stuff here. We're going to have to go. Oh no, he's still going to cut my supply. That's okay. One, and then we'll go ahead and just be two. That's really annoying, but just didn't do enough good planning there. Okay, so that was all my attacks. That was the final um, uh, German activation. So now we will see what the Soviets have to bring into play. They only have two activation markers left, so who's going to go? Here it is, 21st tanks. Um, okay, so. Got a couple guys up here and the, and the reinforcements. So let me think about where they're gonna go and then I'll come right back. Okay, back. Um, would really like to do more with 21st tanks? Probably not gonna happen. So I need to think about good defensive positions or places I can launch attacks from next turn. What does that mean? Well, I put the reinforcements you can see here on the southern road. So I'm actually going to have them come down the southern road because my eventual goal would be to link up with this motorized, hopefully, and then provide a way to come down in the south and either strike through that bridge hex or just have greater access to the southern belly of uh, this whole area. So, because I think the 70th is going to have the northern road covered pretty well and we're going to have those forces coming down and these guys from the south. So let's just put some pressure on this underside. And the way we'll do that is we're just going to start moving, guys. So we'll take the tank and this infantry, and they have four movements. So we go and one. Hey, come with me, guy. And one, and two, and three, and four. So he can hang out there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to pull this motorized back because I'm really afraid he's going to get killed, and he's a good unit. Um, and just there's nothing, I mean, he's got so many different German forces around him, it's probably just better to pull him back. I thought about putting him here at, at uh, Iliodienka, but I think I'm just going to come back here and hang out with these guys because I just don't want anybody coming out and getting brave. Um, so and one, and two, and three, and four, and. Second there. And then these guys were off the map. And one, and two, and three, and four, Five. Eh. So skittish with this tank. I'm just going to keep it in the back so I don't want it to get killed. And then we'll bring in one, and two, and three. And we'll bring in artillery there. So, you know, we're kind of hanging out in the back here. I probably should get a little closer or be more aggressive, but um, I'm scared. I'm just really scared of all that armor, and there's even more coming up the way. And so now we have these northern uh, 21st tanks units. And I think what they're going to do is just hang out in this village because there's no good place for them all to gather. Not everybody can make it to here, and this is not the best place. I mean, it's good. There's only one way to come in on attack. Uh, there's also only one way to get out on the attack. Um, I might be able to like build a bridging unit here and make better use of sort of this rear line, which would be pretty good. Um, but I think for now, we're just going to go here because the 70th next turn is going to be able to swarm down and get further, and then hopefully we can kind of back them up with another attack from the 21st tanks. So it's and one, and that's not a lot, obviously. But I have to protect this tank. These tanks are worth a lot of points, and they don't move very fast, so I've got to protect them. And one, and two, and. See, tanks can only go there, and I couldn't get there. I could get the infantry there, but I couldn't get the tanks there, and I don't want to leave the tanks open to that. Okay, so that's pretty weak movements. Not great, but we have to be a little more cautious now as the Soviets. We don't want to just have our good units hung out to dry. Um, that leaves only one more activation, and it is for the 202. Dun dun, 202. Not many 202 units left. In fact, we only have uh, two, and one is disrupted. The ones that are left, though, 
Ballerific. And here's what's going to be really annoying. I mean, it was kind of unfortunate that they got to go last, but here is something that's going to help them out. They're going to declare an assault turn. And why would I do an assault turn? Well, I'm not really going to move. <laughs> I don't have a lot of places to go. And if I do an assault turn, I can build a strong point. Um, actually, can I build a strong point? I killed this guy's HQ, didn't I? Did I not kill? I killed your HQ, so I wonder if you don't have an HQ anymore on the board if you can build strong points. Um, because strong points, you're limited to constructing them by like how many um, command points your HQ has. So if your HQ has one command point, you can build one strong point uh, during your turn. Uh, if it had two, you can build two. And engineer units, I believe, can build their own regardless of how many command points you have. That's why engineers are, are pretty nice. So let's go look at strong points. Uh, it's section 14 in the rules. Just want to make sure about this. All right, strong point construction. Disrupted units can't do it. Okay, so except for strong points constructed by active engineers, no more strong points can be put under construction during a single activation than the combined command points of all HQs currently in play of the active formation. So there are no HQs in play. It's out. So he actually has zero. So he can't do more. He can only build zero um, strong points. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that since the headquarters is gone, I can't build strong points. That's going to be the ruling I'm going to take. Sorry that took a while for me to look at and think. That's not always fun to have on camera. So that's my bad. Uh, that's unfortunate because I would love to build a strong point here. I'd get to build it pretty much for free because you build them and then as long as you're not attacked, they get completed at the end of the turn. If you get attacked, then you don't uh, get to complete your strong point and you get interrupted. Um, so that is unfortunate because that would be a real big pain in the butt for those forces. So the 202 I think is just going to... Uh, wouldn't it be great to get in a village though and hang out? Um, there's really no good places to go, so he's just going to stay there. This guy is disrupted, so you remember he loses two off his movement, so he actually only has three movement. Um, so we're going to pull him back. He's going to go one, because infantry can just walk through forest. So one, and two, and three. We'll put you there and get you way out of the action. Okay, so that completes the 14 a.m. turn. Now is when we go through and start uh, doing the flip of artillery. So what's going to be really a big pain is that because these guys are not in supply, these artillery, or the artillery units I placed here will not get to flip because they're not in supply. So that's really, really annoying. Um, that's the way it goes, though. So yeah, what's going to happen is like these guys are going to be put out of supply. I think this, or they'll be put on emergency supply. In this game, you don't, you get an extra turn of supply. Basically, when you're put out of supply, you get one turn of emergency supply, and then the turn after that is when you start suffering out of supply effects. And units actually don't leave the board when they're out of supply in this game. They just suffer massive penalty to their stats. Uh, so that's why it's really annoying because a, a unit can be out of supply but still very much active and uh, able to cause damage even though they're capable function. They're combat functionality and movement such as is greatly reduced. So yeah, when we come back and we start the next turn, we'll discuss the implications of having those units cut off temporarily. I assume, I think we'll be able to easily lift the blockade here. But of course, if we spend one turn with those guys being out of supply, and somehow these guys can interdict the line again and cut supply off next turn, then these guys will be out of supply. So yeah, some things to think about next turn, but overall, very strong turn for the Germans. So let's take a look at the board. As it is, Ooh. oh, that's not really focusing, is it? All right, there we go. So we got the 183rd down there. We got some more units creeping up. The third motorized encountering stiff resistance in the north. Eighth Panzer sort of barreling through, but had a slight setback by having the 202 unit there. And of course, the 70th is coming down the line. So great. So that's the end of this turn, and onwards to the next one.